politicization of the DOJ under Trump. Now that's funny. <laughs> Restoration of uh, a normal protocol in the DOJ is cause for concern. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start with um, well, with, uh, what? Gorsuch. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Nevada's Freedom Talk Radio. I am your host, Brendan Trainer, my co-host, Leland Fagri, and we are heard all over the world. We are, aren't we? www.americamatters.us. Puts a spring as well in my as, step. Uh, most of uh, Nevada and, and parts in of California. California. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Pla La Tahoe Basin comes in very, very nicely right. on uh, KCKQ there. Okay. Mm -hmm. 139 days until the presidential election. Yes. And the president is uh, being forced to weather more storms this mm -hmm. week. Hits him against the world. Yes, it is. <laughs> and we can see that now. And uh, we can start with, there are several things to talk about. Why don't we start with the uh, uh, Neil Gorsuch's uh, so-called shocking um, decision in the Bostic versus U.S. or whatever it was, uh, that um, says that... Uh, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 also applies to sexual orientation and, and uh, gender. Uh -huh. And um, the first thing I would probably like to say is that uh, this all depends on the meaning, what the meaning of sex is. Or, or the, the meaning word of, sex. of civil rights is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, yes, that's, that's the broader context. Yeah. Because let's keep in mind that Gorsuch was not this. This case before the Supreme Court was not about the constitutionality of the Civil Rights Act. It was only it about... It should have been. Well, it should have been. But, but, that, but it wasn't. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> look how Rand Paul got eviscerated for saying that the Civil Rights Act overreached right. by going against private property. It right. was basically a Marxist... Should I be, mean, if defending, you had a, if you defending had a, voting rights is one thing, but telling people who they can who they can and can't hire is another thing. Right, and, yeah. and who you can and can't serve. Right, I mean, in, a, in a restaurant yeah. or any business. And, um, but that's another argument that was not reached by the Supreme Court. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things is that um, a lot of people think are confusing the term originalist with textualist. Uh-huh. Yeah, and... Uh, Gorsuch and Justice Scalia also, by the way, are textualists, whereas some people want them to be originalists, but mm -hmm. they're not. They're not. No. And they've revealed that with these, right. with these decisions. Right. And originalists looks at the debates that they had in the Constitutional Convention or in the legislature, tries to find out what the writers of the law meant when they wrote the law. And that's, that is used, but it doesn't have primary significance. The pri a textualist looks at the word itself that's in the statute and decides what the word means today based on common usage today, not mm -hmm. necessarily what it was in 1964. Social conservatives are up in arms. Oh, yes, they are. Um, they are saying that, you know, well, we... we the phrase that they're using is but Gorsuch, like social conservatives look at Trump's past behavior with women and um, the fact that he himself is, uh, while nominally religious, he's not really religious. And um, he, that's why he chose Mike Pence to be his vice president, to bring them into the fold. And whenever the social conservatives were upset with Trump, they would it would be, but Gorsuch. He nominated Gorsuch, you know? Mm -hmm. That's great. We have... Uh, well, but it came from that uh, Federalist Society, which uh, right. pre-selects these people. Right. And it, it lends itself to a great deal of subjective uh, criteria. Right. And I think that we're starting to 
distrust that Federalist Society uh, process now after what we're seeing here? Well, I don't know. I mean, Gorsuch was meant to replace Kennedy, who was not a social conservative. I mean, he wrote o Obergefell, the mm -hmm. gay marriage uh, litigation. Now, that was on the Constitution. That was on the meaning of the 14th Amendment and vague words like dignity of everybody. You know, what is everybody's <laughs> dignity? You know, it's hard to figure those things out. But um, uh, an ex another example of the difference is that the Second Amendment says that you have the right and keep and bear arms. Now, liberalists want to be originalist, and they want to say, well, at that time, that only meant flintlock rifles and pistols, yeah. yeah. Right. But a textualist would look at keep and bear arms and say, well, that means today it means everything from AR-15s down to, uh, you know, handguns and, and hunting rifles and, and everything else that is commonly in use by the people today. But remember, the difference here is we're talking about an act of Congress. Yes. S the Civil Rights Act right. v versus an amendment to the Constitution. So that's why it all hinges on what the meaning of sex is. Mm -hmm. And in 1964, nobody probably thought, I mean, uh, sodomy was still illegal in most of the states, and nobody thought that it would have any kind of, nobody could foresee, you know, the Stonewall riots and the rise of, uh, you know, gay rights and everything else that we are seeing today. So, you know, the, the lesson to my mind here is, is that legislatures better be pretty darn careful what they write into a law. Going forward. Yeah, or they shouldn't write the laws in the first place. That's right, and, and I would <laughs> prefer that. Yes, exactly. Because in this case, it would actually require going back to the Civil Rights Act and re-legislate. Right. To, to, for this to be applicable. Right. And unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Well, the, the textualization has won. Yeah, <laughs> apparently, the discrimination laws have never worked very well. Uh, businesses can usually get around them if they have to. Uh, for example, the uh, dis Amer Americans with Disability Law. Nobody can really point to the fact that more disabled people are being hired. Why? Because businesses are so afraid that they'll get sued if they fire them that they're not going to hire them in the first place, you know? Yeah. And they can find a reason around these things, uh, you know, and especially small businesses. We have HW to thank for that one. Yeah. <laughs> and another another problem will be the athletics. Uh, well, the bathroom problem will be back with us again. Mm -hmm. But the uh, the problem with athletics is these women are being outcompeted because transgender people have still are they're still men, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they can run faster and they're stronger and everything else than most women are. I so. feel particularly sensitive to that uh, as it applies to high school yes. competition because right. you know they they're just int being introduced into the world. <laughs> you know, they get hit by this. Uh huh. Oh my God. Would you like more energy? A photon sound beam may be the solution you need. A photon sound beam uses electrical energy to ionize gases that generate ozone and light. This, this is America, America Matters Media, Media on AM 1180 KCKQ, a Lotus broadcast station. The, the power, power of radio since 1967. Unable to listen to the whole show? A recording of today's program will be available later today. Visit americamatters.us and click on the podcast link. Now, back to the show. Okay, welcome back to Talking Truth to Power, Nevada's Freedom Talk Radio. And we were talking about the Bostic decision and Neil Gorsuch and how he... Um, has ruled in a way that uh, has got a lot of social conservatives extremely upset, and how it might affect uh, come uh, it might affect Trump's reelection if the social conservatives cannot be brought back into the fold if they decide to stay at home this time or vote Constitution Party. Well, they're not going to blame him for it. Well, some of them are. I but mean, if not Trump, at least the Republican Party. Yeah. They, they are saying that why should we vote Republican? We don't, they, they feel almost like 
Trump would like the blacks to feel about the Democrats. You know, why should we vote Republican because they, they promise delivered. things but they never deliver? Yeah, yeah. Right. But he, he can easily, well, I don't know how easy it will be for him, but I think he will address that in the um, rally this Saturday because it's fresh. Yes. And it, and, and it wounds that social conservative part of his base. Yeah. So he has to respond to this. Yeah. And um, even Michael Moore said, don't count Trump out. That's right. <laughs> He's he right. Said, yeah, he's he's very resilient. And another thing about the decision, it uh, it looks like now the sexual revolution is officially won. Now, how will it rule? Shame. Shame. <laughs> Shame. Shame. Oh, look, it's an Unella, Shame. the septa nun from Game of Thrones. Shame. <laughs> you know, back in the days... Uh, she would be on you if you were uh, gay, and you know that was back shameful. in the day. Yeah, back in the, which day was that? Well, in the sixties <laughs> when the civil rights thing was, there, you know, everybody was still in the closet more or less, and uh, but now uh, with this decision, we could see Unella following everybody around if they don't use the right pronoun, uh, especially. But everybody and, it was happier in those days. Well, did that's you, true. Did you see that new poll? Or no. Rec says, record numbers of Americans are unhappy. Right. Because all of this social division, <laughs> and uh-oh, I'm, I'm going to bring up Professor McDonald again. All of this social division. Well, this is, goes back to McDonald. Yeah, it goes back to the intellectual movements that have been so prominently dominated by Jewish people, which is to, you know, they, they accuse Russia of sowing discord, you know, by their stupid ads, uh, you know, $100,000 worth of Facebook ads, half of which appeared after the election. And, but we have these intellectual movements that are constantly sowing discord against the, uh, you know, the white uh, race and the white establishment. Is it okay to be white anymore? I mean, you know, I, you know, I, like I told you before, <laughs> I, I was nervous to wear that t-shirt today. <laughs> I don't know. It's what we're experiencing now is uh, certainly unexpected. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, so the, uh, would, uh, l there are some things that we're going to have to get used to and maybe it's a good thing. I mean, I mean, uh, what what this actually means for businesses. I mean, would a bank be required to have a, a drag queen as their officer or their loan officer or even a teller? I think that's where it's going. Yeah. And... Um, I mean, they're already forced to... I think libraries are... Uh, I don't know if they call it an endorsement, but they've invited drag queens into right. library settings where children are... We're right, books. for little children. and. Yeah. And also uh, to teach uh, woke uh, gender identity to these same little children in schools, which is offensive to many, and it doesn't really make sense because they don't really know what they're talking about, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're introducing them to a subject matter that is not age-appropriate. Right. And, of course, the whole thing with the gay conversion, even uh, therapy, uh, that a parent does not have the right to try to uh, have a child, a teenage child, talk out their sexual, you know, dis disturbances or uh, dysopia um, with a therapist. Even to talk about it is now illegal in Nevada. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, it, I'm not talking about using aversion therapy where you shock somebody if they if they see an image of homosexual sex, but to even talk about their dysphoria. And there is more. There are more and more. Uh, people that are uh, more and more young people that think that they're transsexual and then realize later that no, maybe I'm gay, but I'm not really transsexual. What and some have already had the the drugs, you know, the the hormones and the surgery. The hormone therapy first, or the uh, or, or the surgery, the surgery or both. Yeah, breast enhancement, yeah. for example. Right. Yeah, there was a young uh, young man uh, that I saw in a YouTube clip uh, just the other day. He was in that position. Don't share that with me, would you? No. Do me a okay. favor. Not, don't send that. <laughs> but um, so, <laughs> and it's it's the uh, you know the academic left is going to drive more and more people away from uh, you know from their profession, or it's going to silence them. We've got to get the kids out of public school. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. And uh, some of the numbers that I've seen since the COVID-19 onset 
are pretty encouraging for that. That uh, they're comfortable with educating their children at home. They prefer them being at home because they're concerned that the, the campuses weren't safe. It's bad enough that they weren't being educated, but they weren't safe and vulnerable uh -huh. to assassins. Mm -hmm. uh, so now they've um, oh, they're being permitted to work from home, mm -hmm. and they will um, also um, effectively double as a as an instructor as a teacher. Right. Because first of all, parents parents are are the first instructors mm -hmm. to their children, so that's what it should be. We don't need them. Right. And if they are worthy of being called instructors, they'll find some private sector education. Well, sure. And the public schools not only don't teach, but there's a lot more bullying going on Lots in, of it. in public schools than, than you want to, than mm -hmm. parents could be concerned about. In fact, when we had the transgender dispute in Elko, which is a very conservative county, and we had several Nevada legislatures rush out there to take the side against um, allowing uh, a, a teenager that believes that they're transgender from using the opposite bathroom, uh, the bathroom of their their self-identification rather than what's on their birth certificate. But, you know, a That's lot easy of... For you a to lot say. of <laughs> Yeah. A lot of leftists actually pulled their kids out of the public schools and put them into transgender-friendly private schools. Mm. I mean, it works both ways. Yeah, and th they should be allowed to do that. Right. And suffer the consequences. <laughs> 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 which which can happen that way. So um, the uh, the same thing uh, also didn't get quite the news, but you know that the Supreme Court refused to hear Jeff Sessions' uh, constitutional challenge to the uh, ten, uh, the sanctuary cities. And right, they right. That was another. They one. didn't grant him certiorari, mm -hmm. and this is another thing whereby. Again, the Constitution does not always mean what conservatives would like it to mean. Well, and, <laughs> and it means, th and, or liberals. It doesn't mean, it's not really partisan. Right, but this tradition of, uh, sort of originated with Nixon, the revenue sharing concept. You, know, right. you do it our way at the federal level or you don't get this amount of money. Right. And, uh, you know, it was wrong then, it, it's wrong now. It, it, was, it was never right to federalize much of anything from law enforcement right. to education you know it should be left at the local level yeah this is just a workaround and that brings up the broader question of why are americans sending so much income tax money to the federal government mm -hmm. in the first place yeah but, to enslave them yeah but the uh, the tenth uh, even though the supreme court incorrectly in my view has said that the federal government has exclusive jurisdiction over immigration uh, that does not mean it trumps the Tenth Amendment, and they cannot commandeer the states to p perform duties that the states have not agreed to. The states are free to perform their own policy as long as they don't encroach on the federal government. And so if you're going to condition uh, sanctuary cities to a uh, federal funds for police training, I believe it was. That's my money. Yeah, that's that's our money. Yeah. But as far as the states are concerned, you can't change the rules in the middle of the of the stream, in the middle of the contract. You can't all of a sudden say, well, retroactively, we're now going to put in this other condition on you accepting federal fu uh, the federal funds that we've already agreed you can have. If they want to do that, they have to write a whole new law that says if you don't accept federal funds, I mean, if you don't... Um, turn over everybody that we ask you to turn over to us, then we will uh, withhold the funds. Uh, if it's a new law and the states agree to that law in order to get the money, then, it's, then of course, there's no Tenth Amendment issue. But you'd have to have the House of Representatives. Yeah, you'd, that's the, that's <laughs> you'd have to first write the conditions and then the yeah. individual states would have to accept it. And right now, we don't have the House of Representatives. So. No. Nope, we don't. So, uh, you know... It, a lot of social conservatives are disappointed and they're saying that this is, like Samuel Alito said, this is going to cause an awful lot of litigation. Mm -hmm. Sure but, will. Yeah. But then again, why didn't, I mean, Congress just sits on it, its hands and doesn't change the laws when right. they had the opportunity right. to. Right. right. You know, so if Congress gets off its butt and carves out exceptions for like women's athletes... Uh, to compete against themselves and not against uh, transgender athletes. If they don't do that, then, you know, then uh, that's, th that's on them, not on Gorsuch. That's correct. 
Yeah. Yeah. So at any rate, we've got a lot more to talk about. We and, do? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think we can fill up another <laughs> half hour. <laughs> well, did you hear that uh, the feds are saying that dogs uh, are likely to uh, receive the COVID-19 virus? Yeah. That, that's a trend, they think, uh, developing right now. So uh, we've got to keep our uh, furry friends safe, don't we? Right. Ready for a live game of Clue? For nearly 30 years, Fun Time Theater has held private and monthly dinner murder mysteries. Each night is different. and each this is America Matters Media on AM 1180 KCKQ, a Lotus Broadcast Station, the power of radio since 1967. To join the conversation, call 844-790-TALK. That's 844-790-8255. Now, back to the show. Hello, welcome back to Talking Truth to Power, Nevada's Freedom Talk Radio. And we're going to talk a little foreign policy, as is our want here on the show. Oh, do we have to? <laughs> <laughs> so we have Kim Jong-un, who uh, sent uh, President Donald J. Trump a Dear John letter mm -hmm. recently. Mm -hmm. And the bromance is apparently over. Uh, the DPRK, that stands for Democratic People's Republic uh -huh. of Korea, right. <laughs> <laughs> announces it regretfully will no longer adhere to the nuclear uh, agreement signed in Singapore two years ago. It will begin resuming long-range ballistic missile tests and possibly even a nuclear weapon test. Well, it regrets it. Oh, yes. Yeah, very sorry. Yeah. Sorry it didn't work out. Yeah. Thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> So uh, the DPRK says it is tearing up the agreement because the U.S. has failed to live up to it. And uh, I'm sure the uh, Democrats and the mainstream media will not agree, and they'll unilaterally blame North Korea for the failure. But in my opinion, the Koreans are mostly correct. Um, and they will probably start testing fairly close to the election, and the Democrats will use that to blame Trump for the failure of his uh, diplomacy. Well, it's just the latest uh, chapter in, in the identification of those who don't want Trump to serve another term. Right. That's what this is. Right. And yep. it, wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me to, a bit that Bolton and the rest of the neocon uh, league of uh, leadership would uh, actually negotiate behind the scenes with him, you know, to, and to do this kind of thing. It wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't me a surprise bit. you. No. Look, gosh, you're such a conspiracy theorist. You know, I'll, I'll take credit or blame for it. I don't, <laughs> don't mind. <laughs> we choose truth over facts. <laughs> See? See? Am, am I my right or am yeah. I left? <laughs> so the the agreement between the two countries uh, that was signed was not a definite agreement that no that North Korea was going to immediately give up its nuclear weapons. It was an aspirational treaty mm -hmm. that required concessions from both sides. But, uh, you know, the neocons did not concede anything. They, they demanded surrender first. I call it the Bruce Willis style of negotiating. Any, you know, when he comes in and uh, shoots the alien and says, anybody else want to negotiate? <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and they didn't even end the war. That no, would, that would have been the first thing. Yeah, that would have, or yes, exactly. That's one thing that they wanted, uh, that North Korea wanted, was finally an end. You know, the, we have never ended the Korean War. Yeah. <laughs> it's simply an armistice. Yeah, it, it really is amazing to think about. <laughs> so, that, is that truck not going to pull up then in Pyongyang to pick up the the bombs? You know, right. Like, yeah. They, Bolton said. He yeah, was, Bolton said that uh, he, you know. We want Kim to tell us where they are so we can pull Just up a pull truck. Just pull up a and, truck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they lied and said that, um, you know, it has to be an outright lie, that even though the treaty doesn't say what they claim it says, that Kim uh, actually told them that secretly. You know, I really want to get rid of these weapons, you know. <laughs> you know, we're, we're going to let you guys have them. 
you know, and that's that's. Well, we just we just don't. You know, we weren't there, so we don't know what went down there. But they, it was clearly an aspirational a moment in history. Right. And uh, it's hard to blame Trump for that. Uh, it's easy to blame the likelihood of the neocon mm -hmm. groups um, mm -hmm. that um, challenged it. You right. Know, and Bolton's public statements, etc. By the way, how, what do you think of that John Bolton book? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I've, I've heard about it, but nobody knows exactly what he, what's in it yet. You know, it's a yawn. It's got to be a yawn. They're just, he's just trying to sell it, you know? Right. It's got to be that. Yeah, I mean. He I probably said, he probably used, he, he went after Trump in the way that so many of them did, you know, he's whatever, they, however they describe him, narcissistic or whatever it is, you know, and there's really nothing there. Right. And I don't believe anything that comes out of Bolton's mouth no, anyway. No, nothing. You know? So the Koreans did destroy some weapons facilities. They did suspend activity at other facilities. Mm -hmm. And they released POWs and MIAs, uh, missing right. in action bodies, to us. Mm -hmm. And we did basically nothing in return. Like you said, there was no peace treaty. We did not um, d uh, share a, erect an embassy in Pyongyang, a US embassy. We didn't give them that. And, of course, we never removed any of the sanctions. So the honeymoon's over. Yeah. <laughs> Does he have to return the engagement Boy, ring? I don't know how that works. <laughs> it, was, it was only an aspirational moment. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, once again, uh, maximum pressure, which is the Republican, especially neocon style of negotiation, is not working, and it's not working with Iran, it's not working with Venezuela. Can you please tell me where it is working? I don't think it is. So, um, the... Uh, trying to create the world in our image? That does, yes. That doesn't work that right. well, is that what you're saying? Right, trying to spread democracy at, at, with uh, by bayonet <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's not working. It's for their own good. Right. So... I'm sure now that Russia and China will, will resume more trade with uh, North Korea and um, the uh, Japanese will be a little more nervous. And also North Korea is mad at South Korea because of um, North Korean defectors uh, putting, uh, sending propaganda leaflets, you know, yeah, I'd like to know more about that. Yeah, over the border into into North Korea. You yeah. do, it makes you wonder whether that wasn't them at all. It was just meant to blame South uh, Korea mm -hmm. rather than it being actually South Korea that did that. Just to throw well, a wrench the government. In the I don't think he's saying the government is doing it, but uh, we know that the government pays these defectors to sure. tell stories about what's going on in North Korea, mm -hmm. and the more. Um, you know, violent the stories are, the more uh, they, the more they get paid, and that's why you know stories that such and such a a, a North Korean official was blown up with an anti-aircraft gun, and then a, a few months later we see him, you know, alive. Yeah, he was alive. watching a movie or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Be and a lot of it is because of this, uh, you know, payment of the uh, to the defectors to tell stories, but um, so. Trump has also had uh, a lot of words with uh, South Korea and with uh, Germany over the deployment of American troops. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that he's going to pull American troops out of Germany uh, and so that instead of 34,000 or so, it'll be 25,000. He'll pull the balance Right, about 10,000, I guess, he's going to take right. out of there. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you wouldn't have got that out of Barack Obama. No, no. <laughs> so it, this again points to, in my opinion, why Donald Trump has the right inclination, but not the not the right follow up. I mean, I think it's the military. You know, he's look at the uh, the innocent event last week uh, with, uh, with uh, when he went out over in Lafayette uh, Park there, the square, right? And and they just raise the roof on him. I don't trust the military. I just, I, I feel that is a potential coup there. Yeah. Well, um, it's just my conspiracy. Biden said that he thinks that they would walk him out of the White House. Yeah, and then he that. made that statement. See? Right. Yeah. You know, it's just my conspiratorial mind. But. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, it would be unprecedented, and but you know, for the stakes. See, I don't think the American people understand that the stakes here are the United Nations itself. And we fought two world wars to get that body constructed and to give it teeth. Mm -hmm. And they're not kidding about that. They don't talk about it because they don't want to scare the American people. But that's where they want the power of future generations to be wielded from is the United Nations. Well, everybody on the left is basically one world government. They don't come out and say but that But many either. on the right were also. I yeah, mean, George yeah, you're, W. You're, Bush, yeah. George H. W. Bush, okay. John McCain, Bob Dole, you name a Republican prior to Trump, they were all for this. This is the first Republican that was not for the globalism that the previous generations sought. Right. And we're talking about 100 years here. They had a head start of about 100 years. So the... Um the thing is that Merkel wants the troops there because we pay for them to be over sure, there, yeah. and they spend our money in German, you know, and give their German citizens stores. six week uh, vacations. Right. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, we shouldn't be talking about that now, should we? So, uh, but the the correct thing for Trump to do is pull the troops out and pull all of them out. Uh, the the you know people are also saying that Germany is a a base from which we can uh, attack the Middle East and Africa. In fact, AFRICOM is in Germany. It's uh, mm -hmm. the African uh, so uh, Army Command is in Germany. So, you know, the, uh, the idea that Russia is going to actually attack Western Europe is simply Nonsense. ludicrous. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, what... <laughs> They, you know, they're going to attack Poland, which is a Catholic country that has been against Orthodox Russia for hundreds of years, and and they're going to actually try to subdue these people, and 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 uh, what what would they have to do? Set up a puppet government or occupy? And the Russians have never been very good at that. I mean, even when they <laughs> defeated Napoleon, they followed him all the way to Paris. They stayed there for a couple of months, and then they went home. Well, this is why the defense establishment, uh, I think, is where we should be really watching. Right. Uh, they can't be trusted, and I, I'm not sure that he's free to, to deliberate with them anymore. Right. To even consider what he wants to do uh, with respect to foreign policy and defense policy, because... What I've seen here does not look good. Hi, I'm Kelly Rush, CEO of America Matters Media, here to tell you about Reno Talk today. This is America, America Matters, Matters Media on AM 1180 KCKQ, a Lotus Broadcast Station, the power of radio since 1967. Are you shy and don't want to talk on the air? Text us your questions or comments to 775-237-2266. Now back to the show. And welcome back to Talking Truth to Power, Nevada's Freedom Talk Radio. I'm your host, Brendan Trainer, and my co-host, Leland Fagri. And, uh, well, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement has uh, shown... 80% approval in some polls recently. Yeah. And uh, it has been heard around the world. We've seen it in uh, protests in London, Germany, uh, France, and uh, even in Tehran. Yeah. There was some. Uh, I know, I saw that. Uh, Tehran, uh, Iranian students, uh, the women were in their burkers, you know, up to their eyes, and they were singing, and they were saying, Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Well, they know oppression. So, yeah, you know, they, they do. So they kind of identify with that. Yeah. But you said BLM. I thought you were going to talk about the Bureau of Land Management. That's well, what, that's what that's I another, <laughs> Yeah. Well, Mike Lee is, I saw Mike Lee go on a rant about them recently because they're trying to take more land in Utah. In Utah, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's another topic. Another agency out of control. Right. Uh, yeah, they all are. Yeah. Defund the government, not the police. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the... Um, so uh, what does defund the government really mean? I mean, if they were to defund uh, the vice squads or the or narco squads, I wouldn't matter. I, I would say all oh, for that. You know, I'm mm -hmm. good with that. Mm -hmm. 
but um, you know the uh, the argument now is over whether police really reduce crime, and so you've got both sides arguing over that point of view, and uh, uh, some people will say, well, when we uh, instituted stop and frisk in New York, for example, crime went down, but others will say, look, when the police went on strike and said they weren't going to uh, enforce uh, the laws because of uh, you know, they wanted to see what would happen. In fact, the crime still kept going down, and crime has been going down generally since the yeah, 1990s. for quite a while. And um, so there's a lot of things that the police don't need. They don't need all these all this military equipment. Yeah, a lot of us were uh, befuddled by that because they had, they. I guess they just felt like they had to get rid of it, you know, and the <laughs> local law enforcement were happy to take, you know, 30, I think, 35, 40% of uh, local law enforcement is now federal. Hmm. There was a consent decree under the Obama, during the Obama years that, it, you know, they, there's no such thing as local law enforcement anymore. Really? I mean, when I was in the John Birch Society for 10 years, one of their ma major slogans, other than get us out of the United Nations, mm -hmm. was, you know, keep your, your, your local law enforcement independent, meaning of, of unions, etc., and now of the federal government. But, uh, you know, with 30, 40 percent of local law enforcement federalized, I mean, we don't have that anymore. I mean, this is not America. There's a reason why we use that piece right. of music as a theme for our show. Right. Yes, it is not America. And, you know, back in the day when I had the cable uh, show on uh, here in Reno, uh, we often, we sometimes had uh, a cop, a policeman from Idaho named Jack McLam. Have you ever heard oh, of him? Oh, he's very good. Yes. And he talks about it's the difference between being a peace officer yeah. and being a law enforcement officer, uh -huh. which is what they're called now. I, even, um, you know, when I work for a major airline, it's, it's, it's about LEOs, law enforcement officers. That's what they're called instead of peace officers. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a very good distinction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the I think they can be used interchangeably. If we had uh, not completely destroyed our our youth through public schools, I mean, mm -hmm. we wouldn't we wouldn't be having this conversation. Yeah, and well, we could go to the beach. Police in the public schools is another problem. Yeah, it turns out it is. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> the school to jail pipeline. I'm and, telling you. Uh, yeah, no. And uh, given, you know, arresting these kids for what should be truancy. Uh, speaking of truancy, uh, there's been on uh, Twitter, there's been a picture of a school district that has this huge armored car. Uh -huh. uh, you know, so what are they, you know, the tr they're going after the truants that are hiding in the bunkers, I guess. Those vehicles know? were designed to uh, withstand the force of improvised explosive devices. Right. And they were delivered off to the... Local, local communities, uh, and they were happy to take them off the federal government's hands. <laughs> I mean, if they were expecting riots, then they might have a case for I know there's even one in South Lake Tahoe, the city on, on the California side. Okay. It's got, got one of those damn things. I haven't yeah. seen it, but I know they have it, yeah. Well, you know, we know Rand Paul is trying to end that program, is trying to end so many others. And um, there's a lot of virtue signaling going on. For example, the lynching bill. Rand Paul opposed the uh, lynching bill, which got Kamala Harris and Cory Booker all upset. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they keep, they to keep talking about Emmett Till. That happened 65 years ago. That poor black kid was, uh, they, was lynched. Uh, they uh, just never let go of what they... I mean, they don't have anything, so they have to go back and right. keep these things front and center. They don't have a choice. Right. So they keep bringing up these tropes, even though there hasn't been a lynching in America in who knows how long. But Justin Smollett could show up at a police station with a rope around his neck, and <laughs> you know, and or they find a, a stray rope on a college campus, and all of a sudden there's a yeah, there's a panic right. going on. That's right. <laughs> they were intending to use it somehow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know. Uh, Dave Chappelle, I guess you didn't, you don't watch much TV, you didn't see his I don't, comedy I know show. of him, and I, and, and I hear he's very brilliant, actually. Well, he has, a, he is brilliant, um, he is renowned because he turned down a $50 million contract with the Comedy Central to, because he said that they were going to, it was, it would hurt his independence and oh, his okay. creativity. Well, that's a good reason to turn yeah, it down. Yeah, so uh, he's now on uh, Netflix, you can also see him for free, like a lot of other things on YouTube. 
But his uh, he, he did give a, a very moving uh, discussion for 30 minutes. He called it 846 was the number of seconds that the mm. police officer Chauvin had his knee on George Floyd's neck. And he also said he was born 846 in the morning. But to be a little bit contraire here, without uh, getting the approval from the woke crowd, I mean... Um, uh, there's a couple of things that I have to say, even though it was very moving. I mean, he, what he had to say about um, Laura Ingraham and Candace Owens was not intellectual at all. He just called them the B word. What did he say? He just said, you know, he just ranted about them being B, B you know, B, you know, female dogs. <laughs> I can't say the word or I'll get fined. No, I think we can say that. I think we can say that. <laughs> you, you think we can? But what was what was the point of that, of calling them bitches? Because of their reaction to, um, to s- some of the demonstrations and so on. And because Candace Owens says... Uh, Candace Owens says explicitly that George Floyd's death was wrong and regrettable, but she criticized the black community for making heroes of criminals. You know, her whole thing is right. lifting yourself up by your bootstraps right, right. And, and all that. I admire her very much. Yeah. yeah. So what was the point? I mean, if you were to grade uh, Chappelle, where, where would you put him on a spectrum with total government on one side and the absence of government on the other? That's a proper spectrum of understanding of i don't think he's a total government guy because he, he he likes his own freedom of speech but he also uses the n-word a lot because black people are they allowed can, to use the n-word talking to about themselves mm-hmm. so my question is is that a form of black privilege yeah I think because it is. i can get fired yeah you know is it okay to be white yeah <laughs> i'm not sure no exactly you know you can be fired uh and people have been fired but uh, for using the N word, and of course, what really pissed me off was one of my favorite books growing up was Mark Twain's Huckleberry Finn, mm-hmm. and it's sprinkled with the N word. Mm-hmm. But it the is. context of the book is it's a ti- it's a tri- tirade against slavery and the epic in which it was written. Right. So would that that would have been used all the time. So, did, uh, but even anything close to the N word, for example, there's a Wikipedia page that is filled with examples of people being canceled over the use of the old English word niggardly. Did you ever hear that yeah, word? Yeah, it yeah. just means uh, cheap. Cheap, yeah. Right. And But if people use that, if professors in a college use the word niggardly, they are likely to be called up by the uh, PC crowd. And, I think and that came out uh, a few years back. I think was it Letterman or something like that. And he it, may have. It was it was hysterically funny because nobody understood <laughs> the definition of well, the word. Well, you know, I, I worked in food service for over twenty years, and um, yeah, uh, depending on tips, and um, if um, I, I know for 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 a fact that people that work in food service uh, have uh, would say that. Black customers have the reputation for being awfully, often niggardly when they tip. Right. <laughs> 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 but, you know, am I going to get canceled if I say that? I, I, you know, you'd, you'd run up against all kinds of <laughs> issues, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, another thing, why do black conservatives and li- libertarians like the... Uh, the uh, professor James McWhorter, who's a linguist, but he has, uh, and uh, there's a new young voice that I was introduced to, uh, you know, researching this named uh, Hughes Coleman Hughes, and he uh, is a, a new young black voice for moderation and reason, and in, in the discussion, uh-huh. you can see his him on YouTube, but but why is it that black conservatives and libertarians have anglo-irish names while all the Irish, all the radicals have muslim names i mean is that something we should consider that um if if you're going to go out and and be culturally so culturally an, uh, separate that you're going to use uh, an african name that doesn't make sense to in, to the jet population at large is that a unifying thing or is that yeah, a divisive does, thing? Yeah, exactly. Does it help or not? Right. Yeah. I so, see where Boris Johnson is, has been an offender vendor after a protester rushes his car. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it shows the dent here in the, in the trunk. Gosh, I hope he's all. <laughs> and uh, we hope that you'll tune in again next week. <laughs>